I'm just holding the muzzle end with a, a uh, center here, live center, which just gives us a way to roughly center it in the chuck jaws. You'll notice a piece of masking tape. I do two wraps of masking tape on the carbon fiber where we're going to be supporting the end of the barrel for machining. And then a brass shim on each of the jaws just to ensure nothing will get marred. These are expensive barrels. I do everything I can to protect the finish carbon fiber. So I'm just coming down with enough, no, I wouldn't even say pressure, just enough snugness to keep the shim there as I go around to each jaw. So this provides protection and also a little bit better of a pivot point as I center the front and back of the barrel. Okay, that roughly there, I can remove my live center, tail stock. And then for this, <clears throat> first we gotta part this completely off, this, this whole stub. So I'm just gonna center this roughly <clears throat> on the outside. Two reasons, the bore is all messed up in here anyway. And this will give us a fresh surface and a clean bore to indicate off of. So like I said, for this operation, I'm just gonna generally center it on the outside of the barrel. This is just, just to get it centered so I can part it off. And I'm sorry you can't see the indicator that we're already within five thousands here. Go to the high side, tighten a little bit. So just kind of working back and forth until we got a snug enough clamping pressure so the barrel doesn't move, but also not so much that we're crushing anything. Get my parting tool. Slap that in. All right, and then we're gonna check center in terms of diameter. The parting tool, certainly don't want it above center. And I'm a hair, maybe one degree or so below. All right, so I'm gonna be parting in front of this line and then it'll all be faced off machine proper and whatnot. Slow and steady, lots of oil. See the chips curling off like that, that's good. This is a brutal operation, so very slow and steady here. It's a very big piece of high-speed steel going through stainless steel. So we want enough engagement to lift a chip and not so much that grabs and then not so little that you're work hardening anything. I just make a cut, back off, add a little more oil until we're all the way through. Just like a hacksaw, you can hear when the cut's coming to an end. The pitch changes quite a bit. I don't know if you can hear that, but we're getting super close here. And you'll see this start wiggling as it breaks through. So 
rigidity is key here. Yep, here we go. All right, there it is. How's that crown? That's probably fine. I'll just leave that. That's perfect. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna fish out that stub from the chip pan and set that aside back in the box for the customer. <clears throat> like I said, I think they, I, at least myself as a customer, I, I would, I would uh, enjoy that or appreciate that. I guess is a word. You know, so they'll be able to keep that. <clears throat> As a, hey, what was my barrel twist rate or what was my barrel serial number? It's all there. I obviously record this stuff, but uh, it's there. They want it. All right, cool. Parting off went perfectly. So let's go ahead and switch up to a turning tool, combination facing and turning tool. So all I'm going to do right now is face this clean and then re indicate. I get the oil off real quick so I can put some dicom on there. So I'm just going to add some dicom right now. So when we're ready to lay out our length, that'll be dry and ready to go. All right, so I'm just going to lightly face that off, uh, clean that up to give us a good bore. The first pass I'm going to do by hand. And then the second pass I will do under power feed. Do one more finishing cut. About four thousandths. Still a little bit of a ring there. Try to cut that out. Yeah, that's better. Okay, that's good there. And I'm going to just slightly chamfer the mouth of that for the uh, range rod to get in. Okay. That's chamfered. I'm going to clean that up one more time. There we go. Okay, now we can go ahead and center off the bore like we would properly. And kick the machine into neutral so I can turn the chuck without a breaker bar. <clears throat> Okay, so here's where I'm going to check the fit of my pilot. That one feels just a touch loose. So 256 is the nominal bore size. We're going to go 2564. Okay, so <clears throat> as I'm sure you've seen before, I've got all these incrementally sized bushings um, that are used for chambering reamers recess cutters, crown cutters, anything that has basically a, a piloted cutter. So I'm going to try that size and see <clears throat> uh, if it's a better fit. Okay, that one's going in nice, but uh, still feels like a little, little loose. 
Let's go up to two, five, six, eight. There we go. That's the biggest one I have, so <laughs> we're just gonna have to go with that. But it does feel good. It feels it's got enough clearance to slide, but not jiggly wiggly. So we'll just push that in slightly, just so it bears on the tapered portion of the range rod. And lately I've been noticing this with proof barrels. They're, the boys are a little on the larger side, but they still shoot awesome. So as long as it's consistent, you know, I don't know if that's intentional or, or not. I'm not complaining. Like I said, the proof's in the pudding and boy, do they shoot nice. So I'm not gonna complain. Okay, so what we got here is a brown and sharp um, best test half thousandths uh, indicator. And we're just going to go ahead and center this proper. Okay, so there you can see each little tick mark here is uh, one or half of half a thousand, so point zero 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 five. <clears throat> so this is showing me, let's go to the low spot. Just to show you. So we're not quite five. Call that about four. Four thousands out of center. So we'll go to the high side. Which is right there. Bring it in about half. Okay, so we're super close, couple tenths there. High spot. Slight adjustment. One or two tenths there. Now, obviously, the pilot needs a little clearance to be able to fit in the bore and not gouge the crap out of everything. So what you're seeing there is, is definitely just clearance. I mean, one or two tenths, dude, guys, that's, you know, a human hair, they always say is four thousandths. So that is good and centered for our muzzle work. And then I'm going to record, I always record the bore size as, it, as I measure it with these. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick while I'm thinking about it. 2568. So on the back of my spec sheet, I have barrel bore. Um, just good, useful information to have. So, <clears throat> now we're going to go ahead and lay out our length and turn the tenon for a 5H24. I always go kind of 600 thousandths and then walk the shoulder back to about 5 eighths ish. Just depends on where that brake wants to line up. Okay, there's that. Bring the tool in, make sure my cross slide's locked. Yep. So I'm going to take a pass up to that scribe line, set a zero, and proceed to cut it down to the point six two four. Twenty thousand steps of cut per pass. Move to a micrometer for measurement measuring. Falling down to your person who's holding the rope for you. to go. You know, and since that barrel moved a little bit back, I'm gonna just before I get all the way down, we're gonna make sure that guy's centered because you can see that heavy cut 
push, push the barrel back slightly. Um, it's not a huge problem. I was just going a little too aggressive. That's my fault. This isn't a race. Ooh, that's hot too. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> Still kind of learning this machine, feeds and speeds, and you get a little bit uh, comfortable because of the rigidity and the mass of the machine, but. Okay, it didn't move too much, but enough to make an adjustment. It maybe snug these jaws up just a bit more. Oh yeah, I got a little, a little bit loose. So we're gonna go a little bit past this time, just to crunch down a little bit more on the jaws. <clears throat> Those breath shims probably relax a little bit. That's why I always check. There we go. Happy with that. That's why I keep my indicators at close reach, set up, ready to go. See what we got left. Seventy something. Twenty. Six fifty one. Got twenty six left. Okay, six twenty four. Good deal. Done with our turning tool. Okay, so since we have a known device with a relief cut, which the Thunder Beast has, um, I don't need to do a relief in the back. So I'm just going to chamfer the front of that real quick. <laughs> Just a little chamfer there to help the threading tool as it does its work. Okay, I've got to set my compound here <clears throat> to the proper angle to cut threads. Take a couple seconds here and change this. Uh, square up our tool post. So 60 degree threads. We're going to be taking each pass with the compound incrementally at that 60 degrees. Got to loosen up the uh, lock. Okay, now we're going to dike them. 
Okay, next thing to do, set up the machine for 24 threads per inch. It's going to be L, Bravo, Sierra, 6, Victor. Lima, Bravo, Sierra, 6, Victor. <clears throat> Set my cross slide zero and then gonna come in. Actually, I'm gonna slow the machine down again. Okay. So uh, we're going to turn on, touch off the tool, take a pass, and make sure we got 24 threads per inch. And there I'm just touching, zero out my cross slide, I'm sorry, my compound rest, and just take a, a scratch pass. Just like that. Get my 24 threads per inch pitch gauge. Yeah, did that give me enough? That looks about right, but let me just go ahead and get a clean cut here. Zero. It's there. There we go. That's something I can see. I'm going to get my magnifiers out because I'm old. I actually did. It's just like one of the most unique, gorgeous ice finds probably in Wyoming. And, uh, Oh. <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking at the 16, geez. Like, that does not look right at all. 24. Okay, each line lines up with the uh, teeth on the pitch gauge there, so. We're good. I know that's 24. All right, now we can go ahead and finish up these threads. Check them. Oh man, look at that. There we go. There we go. I'm going to stop there. Plenty of clearance, but certainly not too loose, not too tight. Okay, so we're done with the cutting tool. Uh, I like to dress the threads with a little Kratex. So this product is called Kratex. It's like a rubberized um, abrasive, um, but it's just gonna smooth these out, knock off any burrs, 
uh, just make it make it a little nicer. Um, before I do that, actually, and go back in with this, I'm just going to hit the end of that and chamfer it again. Because that uh, threading operation kind of peels steel over the side there. So I'm just going to kiss that real quick. There we go. Just kiss it with the end of my threading tool here. There we go. Yeah, that looks much nicer. All right, and then the Kratex. Go that way. Go the other way. Great. All right, there we go. A little burr on the shoulder there. Now I'm going to go in one more time with that shouldering tool and just clean that up a couple thousandths. And we'll be done with that. Still got it. Okay, I like this speed. Go ahead and zero out on our shoulder diameter. And then just touch off on the shoulder and give it a couple thousands. And over out. Okay, there's one more step here before we take this out and flip it around. We're going to cut a pop, proper crown on there. All right, so um, yeah, it looks like I'm already set up in this tool holder. All I got to do is rearrange my compound. We're going to cut a 60 degree internal crown. Um, since this is covered up by a muzzle brake and suppressor, uh, cutting any kind of fancy crown like 11 degree or whatever is pointless. <clears throat> so the internal 60 degree gives us protection and a, a uniform concentric crown with the bore. So we're going to go ahead and do that now with a single point cutter. So we'll change our angle here. Sixty degrees off ninety. Rearrange this. Something like that. All right, you're probably not going to be able to see that, but I'm just going to whisk. Uh, let me reposition this. I'm going to head back into the tool with the, or back into the barrel with the tool. Okay. Speed's good. It's going to be a manual operation. Okay, that's good. One more fine finishing pass. Yep. So there we go, 60 degree internal crown with a flat external crown. 
square, concentric. It's going to be great. Uh, one last little check. Make sure there's no burrs in there. But that's a that's a very very cool idea. Yeah, I suddenly like the back three would be a hell of a lot better than the first one. So at least I, I you know, and it, and so it, no it, considerable it, snagging it, there. It's a tiny thing right there. So let's hit that with a real light sandpaper. Just to kind of break that off. There's, there's a tiny burr I could see. That should be enough. And then we'll just polish this flat crown while we're at it. I'm not going into the bore here. Just polishing the surface. And just touching that chamfer 60 degree crown. <clears throat> Followed up with a little Scotch Bright. Just to give it that bling. Touch there. <clears throat> and then knock off the tiny burr on the shoulder. There it is. Smooth. Going to come in and do a close inspection before I take this out. Let's clean off some of this dicum and grease and oil. And then blow it off. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna get my magnifiers on here again. Beautiful, yeah, that is real nice looking. Yeah, that looks great. <clears throat> no more burrs on the crown, not even the slightest bit of snagging now. So great, we're done here. I'm gonna switch up and we'll start the uh, breach end.